Hey, Tom here, Flip Anything USA. Uh, so on my blog, I share how I made my fortune in real estate. Uh, been a one-man show mostly for my whole life. Uh, got about 130,000 square feet of rentals that I maintain myself. I have management companies that handle some of the residential stuff. Uh, I also keep a fair amount of stuff that I, I flip and roll. So anyways, uh, today we're going to talk about uh, Ken McElroy. Uh, he's somebody I've just recently become aware of. Uh, and I, I like what I hear. I like what he has to say. He's seems like he's been around a while. Uh, always appreciate experience. Uh, but uh, it, it's kind of always interesting when I see someone that's taken a different path and what their thoughts are and, and uh, you know, what how they got where they've got and, and what they've got and how they manage what they got. And uh, so it's interesting. It sounds like he uh, used... Uh, kind of other people's money. He was a syndicator from what I gathered from just very the beginning. But, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll start that up, uh, in a minute. We'll, uh, we'll go on. Uh, look, I'll go ahead and start another video. We'll run it high speed here and, and we'll see. This is a, this should be, be a successful landlord. Okay, guys, so this is about landlord basics. So, okay, uh, let's see, I don't know about basics. Let's just check it out. All right, so let's watch it. Okay, guys, so this is about landlord basics. So, many of you have written in and asked these questions about, you know, some of the things that you know. I've been in the property management business for about 30 years, and we have a very large property management company that manages all of our properties. So, we manage self storage, commercial, apartments, vacant land, new construction, you name it. We've been around the real estate business a long time. So these are six landlord basics that you just cannot afford not to know. And if you find any value in these videos, just hit subscribe and like because other people just like you are trying to find good information out there on YouTube. So thank you. Number one, remember this is a business. So this is not a stock. It's not something that you can just invest in and walk away from. Yeah, and I'm going to say that because one, and I'm just going to comment on his comments because it's what I'm doing. Uh, listen, I, I don't really refer to my tenants as tenants. I refer to them as customers and they are your customers and you take care of them and uh, you got to treat your tenants like customers. And that means you, you know, it's just like if you're in a, if you're a waiter and somebody spills a water, you don't go, Oh brother and drag over the, you get over there quick and you wipe up the mess. That's what you got to do. It might be rain coming through the roof or it could be, you know, somebody busted in a door. It could be a fire. It could be anything, but you, you got to jump and run, especially when they have a plumbing problem or anything like that. They're your customer. It doesn't even matter if it's their fault. Get over there, get it done, get it fixed. You let them know it's their problem. But, you know, you, you take care of them like customers. So do treat it like a business. It's a business. Let's keep listening. This is a full-on business. This has income and it has expense. Your tenants are your clients. They are not necessarily your friends. Now, it's good to be friendly, but you need to be able to treat them more like clients. And the lease is the contract between the two of you. You need to know that there's going to be difficult conversations coming up. This is your money or it's somebody else's money that's invested. Now, see, now he's got, he's, he's, he's talking more like a property manager there that's under the gun. So I, I actually am friends with a bunch of my tenants, to be quite honest. And, and you know, there are all those difficult things. It's like, hey, guess what? Taxes went up. I got to pass the burden on to you. That happens. And, uh, so, but, you know, he's right about that, but, uh, you know, I mean, you know, tenants, there's all kinds of stuff, believe me, I've had apartments, buildings, I went upstairs, baiting on the door, nobody answers, I opened the door, there's two little kids sitting there, they were told to be quiet, I could have been beaten on the door because there was a fire, and they would have burned up, because they didn't answer the door, but in this case, I was beaten on the door, it's because I needed to get in for another reason, I've also had that happen before, and I opened up the door, and there was a V8 engine <laughs> sitting on a cherry picker, they were rebuilding the engine, and the second floor of a two bedroom apartment building. Uh, you know, I had multiple two bedrooms, but anyways, it was one of those. So let's keep watching. And you guys are gonna be looking for some kind of a return. So there's rent collection and management over the expenses and real bookkeeping. And that financial statement or that income statement is your report card, don't forget. Number two, be super clear on your policies and procedures. So at our properties, we always have a separate document of policies and procedures around clubhouse use, around the pool use, around loud music, around parking, around all kinds of things that are going to happen at your property or inside of your community. You're going to yeah, you got to police your property. That's a fact. And that's why I don't really have apartments anymore. Uh, I don't like apartments for a lot of reasons. Uh, I, I love office, industrial, commercial much more uh, because 
the problem is, you know, uh, like I said, I've had people flush a towel down a toilet and it flooded seven units, cost me $20,000. Uh, that, that can happen. They have things in there like, who takes care of the landscape? Is it the tenant or is it you? Can they have pets? And if they do, then you need another pet policy. And that pet policy will outline things like sizes, the numbers, the breeds, all those kinds of things need to be inside of that new policy. But that's certainly a policy. What about smoking? What about smoking inside of the unit? I know for a fact that we've had plenty of smokers in our units. And afterwards, those are some of the toughest units to clean because of the residue yeah, on the walls, et cetera, et cetera. And so do you have enough money to be able to cover those kinds of repairs after they move out? How many cars do they have? I know we had a property in Flagstaff, Arizona that was near a university and each two bedroom unit it sometimes had four kids in them and each kid had a car so you have four cars for one apartment all you have to do is the math to know that there's not enough parking for something like that so cars can be a big thing in many many locations especially where there's limited parking like downtown in some urban areas and things like that so make sure that you have the make model license plate number and all those things and in some cases even stickers for their cars so that you know exactly who's parking where and when can they park their work van or their truck at your community or maybe trailers or boats or those kinds of things you know those are usually extra parking and they can take up a lot of your open spaces which then restrict the parking for your guests yeah it, you know there's you when people are that does happen limited parking maybe you have two two parking spots to a unit and you know or one if it's a one bedroom sometimes and they got a boyfriend or girlfriend and they you know they got to park down the street but if there's not good off street parking you know they're taking somebody else's and then you got the sticker you put the sticker on the window and it's very hard to peel off uh, and you know, you know, are you getting, you got a tow? That's always fun when you tow somebody's car and then they come back to you wondering where their car is. So, uh, there is, uh, I don't love the apartment building business. I really don't. Uh, it's, it, it is a lot of work. It can be a lot of work. It can be very expensive when somebody, uh, you know, like I said, vandalism is higher on those. Uh, the, you know, I had a, a coin operated laundries in mind that actually were pretty lucrative. I got about another 30 bucks per tenant. Uh, you know, I know 22, you know, every, every pound of quarters is $22 and 50 cents. But also I remember one time I had a kid come in and he tagged all the, you know, tagged, he, he wrote all over the laundry rooms, you know, I had two different laundry rooms in this complex and he wrote these gang signals and all of a sudden, or, you know, whatever, some sort of goofy stuff. And, but it was gang, you know, symbols of some sort. And, People were upset. People wanted to move. They thought the gangs had infiltrated the apartment building and all this. And, you know, come to find out, I go dumpster diving and I find this kid's homework. It's an eight-year-old kid that has terrorized everybody by just, you know, writing these, uh, uh, you know, these, oh, I guess the gang's logo uh, on these things. Anyways, boom, told them. I remember I'd go on up telling the mother, look, you're out. You guys got to go. You got 30 days to move out. She's crying. She said, my husband beats him and beats him and he never learns. And I'm like, well, I don't know. Either beat him less or beat him harder. I don't know. But it, it was a bad deal and I was glad to get rid of him. Let's keep listening. These are all things that need to be inside of your policies and procedures. Who's going to pay for the electric, the water, the sewer, the trash? Is it you? Is it the tenant? On some master metered buildings, it might be the landlord. On some non-master metered buildings, it might be the tenant. That needs to be all clear inside of your policies and procedures and even sometimes inside of your leases. Sometimes new landlords forget all these small little details and when they come up later, it's very, very difficult to enforce these things because they're not in your policies and procedures that are signed and they're not in your lease that is signed. Number three, if you put it into your lease, be ready to enforce it. Remember, you have to perform and enforce the contract. So the areas of dispute around leases are typically the following. Things like rent, when is it due? Things like the late fee, which a lot of times you need to enforce. If you don't enforce the late fee, then you're basically setting the precedent for the resident to pay late. Yeah, that's a fact. You got it. You got to hit them hard. You got to always collect late fee. And you almost act like you can be happy about it. Say, well, look, I don't mind you being a few days late because you owe me money. But any later, you're going to be in default and you're going to get a different notice. Each and every month. You need to enforce that late fee. If they pay you with a check and it bounces, it's called an NSF or non-sufficient funds. You need to be aware of the fees that the bank may charge you in addition to the late fee that the resident might owe and those have to be enforced. During the lease, you're going to see all kinds of crazy things. You're going to see roommates come and go. You're going to see sublettings. You're going to see new pets. Yeah. You're going to see new cars. You're going to see boats, trailers. You're going to see damage. You're going to well, he definitely knows the business. I, I tell you, one time I had a guy that was, I'll tell you two stories. Okay, one is, I'm probably going to forget the second one, but... Uh, this some gal or, or somebody that had a pissed off boyfriend. Well, he comes over and he pulls his car up. He's drunk and he pulls his car right up to the building. You know, there's a parking spot there anyways. He gets as close to her window as he can. And he revs and revs and revs the engine until he catches the engine on fire. 
<laughs> and then he can't, and then he turns off the car, but the fire's going. Burns up the entire car, all up along the side of a good thing it was a, a brick veneer. But yeah, it burned up the car right next to the apartment building that I had. And uh, anyways, uh, those are the kind of in, in things that happen. I've had some way worse ones too that I, I can't even tell you. Uh, or at least I'm not going to. It might be kids while I'm listening. But uh, let's keep watching. You'll see all kinds of things. These things are all in your lease. They need to be enforced, and you need to take care of them immediately, especially if you have other tenants in the community, because sometimes residents can be disruptive and chase off a lot of your good tenants. Absolutely. So make sure that you're enforcing things inside of your lease, and you're taking care of them right away. So if you put it into the lease, make sure that you guys enforce it. The fourth thing, the security deposit. By far, the security deposit is the most misunderstood and the biggest issue, especially when people move in and when people move out. What I always suggest that you do is fill out a move-in form, which you can find on KenMcElroy.com under forms. And this form needs to be very, very detailed and specific. So just like when you guys have got a rental car and they walk around the car and you take a look at all... Yeah, so along with those forms, take pictures. That's what I do. I just take pictures of the unit before they moved in. And then if I have to reference it and say, hey, look... This place is a dump now. I mean, to be quite honest, I've got good tenants, and I a lot of, they st and they stay for a long time. Most of my tenants, so even if it's a little bit worn and stuff, I let it slide. I don't worry about it. All the little things that the car might have on it, because you don't want to be charged when you return that car. The same is true for an apartment or a rental. You want to make sure that the landlord and the tenant sign off on a move-in form so that everything's disclosed. Let's say there's a, a cigarette burn in the countertop that it's on there, or there's a nick in the bathtub, for example, that was not repaired and that it's on there so that you as the tenant are not charged by the landlord and that the landlord also knows that you as, as the tenant did not do the damage. Yeah, it's almost like when you rent a car, you walk the car and make sure that there's no dents in the car because you'll get a bill for those dents sometimes if they're not made aware of them. So it's, it's just a very good... He's 100% on all this. Um, and, you know, I, I, like I say, I, I don't like the business that much. I mean, I'd get in fury. I remember walking up, and I saw this guy driving this pile of crap car, and he pulls in, and out comes his arm, okay? Out comes his arm with the, with the, uh, the ashtray, and he dumps it in my parking lot, and then he drops his hand lower, and he starts banging the, the ashtray on the side door of his car because it was such a piece of crap it didn't matter and i'm thinking oh great he just dumped you know about 40 cigarette butts in my driveway and yeah, anyways i see another guy just twist off and pop you know top off the pop and just threw it over his head and it, and it just rolled between my legs as i'm walking i'm just like shaking my head but i wasn't i told my manager you know put your eyes on these guys and it, it stuff happens this is a very, very important form, especially as it pertains to when you're trying to get your deposit back or when the <laughs> landlord is trying to give you your deposit back. I always suggest on a move out that the landlord or the manager always takes lots of photos. Take photos of everything that you're going to charge that tenant for, whether it's the cleaning or the maintenance or any kind of repairs, because it's very, very, very important, not only written documentation, but photo documentation, because I guarantee you that the tenant is going to have a very different viewpoint with you as the landlord or the manager on what you need to do in order to get that unit rent ready for the next tenant for move-in. You guys are going to have very different opinions on this, and the difference is typically going to be taken out of the deposit in order to fix those kinds of things so that you can re-rent the unit. And so you guys are going to have issues around the carpet repairs or the carpet cleaning or the unit paint or all those kinds of things, all these little things that a tenant may not see that you see immediately that you're going to need to do. And don't forget, when a tenant moves out, by law, every state is a little bit different. You have to notify them in writing of exactly the detail of what you're going to do if you're going to hold any portion of their deposit. And by law, in most states, you have to have their deposits back to them somewhere between 14 and 30 days. Yeah, he sounds like he might have had some real pain in the ass tenants. I really never had that much trouble. Uh, you know, and if you guys ever get a chance, watch the show Pacific Palisades. I think it's how it's called. Yeah, Pacific, Pacific, Pal Pacific Palisades. Uh, Awesome movie, Landlord's Worst Nightmare. Guy moves into the downstairs portion of a house in San Francisco, and uh, just excellent acting. It was a great, great movie. But yeah, if you get a chance, watch that. Pacific Heights, actually. Pacific Heights, that's what it was. Pacific Heights. But uh, let's keep listening. Depending on the state. So be very aware of that. So right when they move out, you need to go into the unit. You need to make sure that you do your inspections. You need to make sure you do all the itemization of everything that you need done. And you need to try to get all that work done in that short period of time. So it's part of that documentation when you send it out to the tenant and say, these are the things that we had to charge you from your security deposit. And here is the balance. And they're going to be typically upset at the balance amount. But you need to have all that documentation. It'll mitigate a lot of dispute later. Trust me on this. Make sure that part of your fees are non-refundable so that they can cover things like 
like cleaning, painting, and carpet cleaning on move out. There's no such thing as a non-refundable deposit. Think of that. A deposit is a deposit. You have a non-refundable fee and a deposit. And so make sure those are super clear and your tenant understands what those are being used for at the beginning, or in the middle, or at the end. Number five, run a proper criminal and credit background check. So a lot of times landlords just want somebody to move in. This is the mistake that a lot of landlords and managers do because they have pressure on vacancy. They want- Yeah, spelt vacancy wrong. <laughs> right there. Not that that doesn't happen here too. But uh, so, you know, it, it, you do want to run a criminal background check, especially, you know, it's terrible. Have a fun that you run into a pedophile or somebody that's got something like that and there's kids in the building. That's just, so it's really important, really important. Uh, you know, I, one of the main thing though is always, you always look at their rental history. You know, they, and then even then you got to be careful. You know, somebody is, it's, I read this from somebody else a long time ago and they would say that when they rent to somebody, what they do is they get their personal address and then they go visit them without telling them. And they say, hey, can I use your restroom? I mean, they really took it <laughs> to an extreme. But you know what? If the place was a pigsty, they never moved in. So they really avoided a big headache that way. So, and depending on where you're at, you know, big rentals, I mean, you know, a lot of them are small ones. You know, the smaller you are, the less you can afford to be screwed over, you know, with a squatter or, or something like that. But we'll, we'll keep watching. I want to get somebody in there right away, and so they say, yeah, somebody shows up, writes a big check, has lots of cash, gives them the cash, and the next thing they know, they have a nightmare on their hands. So the minute that you tell a resident that you're going to run a criminal background check, which, by the way, they pay you for, they're going to pay you, say, $50 for, for you to run their credit. No different than if you're buying a car or you're buying a house and they run your credit. It's the exact same process. You're trying to make sure that you're finding out everything about them and that they have the ability to pay and they don't have a lot of outstanding debt. And even if they do, that's okay. You can still work on those things, but you need to know and you need to have that conversation. And those can turn into things like extra deposits or extra rent, et cetera. There are plenty of rental screening websites out there, so just go find a good one. And don't forget, the resident pays you to run their own credit. So I don't know why you would skip this very, very important step. I always say trust, but verify. The sixth thing and the last thing is fix what's broken. Now this might seem rather obvious. If you want quality tenants, you have to be a quality landlord, period. If something is broken, fix it ASAP. If your resident calls you, you need to fix it right away and let them know when it's going to be fixed. You need to have a handyman on speed dial that can take care of residents' needs immediately. When you do this, the resident will be happy, they'll see that you're responsive, and when you come to the end of your lease, they're probably gonna renew because you were a good, responsible landlord taking care of their needs along the way. Remember, they're paying you rent and you have an obligation to them too. Of course, you gotta make sure that the problem is legit, and in many cases, you might even be able to do it yourself or talk them through. Yeah. But that's just good customer service. The one thing that I would highly recommend is that you never let a tenant do their own work, do their own paint. Just what I was, place. that's exactly what I was just gonna say. You're asking for trouble. Don't don't ever trade or let anybody do work for you. Uh, you know, you can let them call a plumber and you can reimburse them, but don't let them do their own work. That's a, a big no-no. It'll haunt you. But let's I'll let them finish. You need to control all of that, unless of course they're like a licensed plumber or a licensed electrician and they can do some of the work themselves. But even then, I would find out exactly what it is they're going to do, get it in writing, so you have it in your paperwork and you have it in your documentation. I did this on one of my rentals where I had a very, very good tenant that was a licensed plumber. He wanted to install a water softener. I had him write it up, fit it up. I had him go get the water softener at Home Depot. He installed it himself, and I knocked off 100 bucks off of his rent. That's a win-win. Hmm. Well, let's see what else. So if you follow these six landlord basics, you will be well on your way to being a successful landlord. And thanks for listening. So, yeah, that was a nice video, Ken. That was a good one. Uh, you know, no argument, everything you said is cool. What I will add to it, though, I will add some. So one thing, if you're a, a, a small landlord, big landlord, whatever, you can call me. I've got 130,000 square feet of rentals. I know all my tenants. Uh, you know, and some of my tenants, you know, have 16,000 square feet. You know, I, I have some big tenants. So, but I also have a lot of small ones too, but I treat everybody the same. Everybody's a customer. Uh, you know, things happen, things break. People don't want a toilet down. People don't want an air conditioner down. Uh, but this is my secret weapon. It's my phone. So A, I train all my tenants to not call me, text me. I say, text me your problem. Now, one of the best things about having your problem texted to you is they're not going to give you a huge laundry list. They're going to give you the what's most important that needs to be fixed. And then second most important. In other words, it'll be prioritized by what's driving them the craziest. Usually it's just one item anyways. You know, heater's out. Air conditioner doesn't work. We've got a flood. We've got a leak. We've got you know, a rain problem. But 
the beauty if you're organized is you have your tenant text you. That way you, you, you could be in a movie theater and you go, oh, I got to go and you jump out. And then what I do is I text back to, and now I have somebody I'm training to take my place, but I text back to the, uh, to the tenant and I say, end with like an air conditioner. I text back my tenant, they got a, let's say they got a heater out or an air conditioner out. I text the tenant and my air conditioner guy together. And I say, hey, we got a problem here. When can you get there? He responds back to both of us. Uh, I can get there at 3, you know, 3 p.m. And then the tenant might write back, okay, I'll be waiting for you. So it, then I'm just observing, okay? And then I might write the, 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 you know, whether it's an air conditioning guy, plumber guy, or whoever it is, I might write him separately and say, hey, let me know when you're done, how it went. And, and that's what I do. And so when he lets me know how it went, then I text the tenant and I say, everything good and then they let me know so you can you can manage so efficiently and you're keeping a record you've got a record of how responsive and how good you are as a landlord or how terrible you are uh but the 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 text is a great thing you got to train your tenants on it and your tenants will sometimes call and i've been calling you all day i say well and my my if you if you got my phone you call my phone my phone says uh i don't pick up my phone Text me if it's important. Uh, if I don't recognize your number, you may not hear from me. Uh, it's like that. And so the beauty is you get a text. They mean business. I can respond quickly. I can bring the proper trade in. I can keep an eye on everything. And it takes nothing. You know, it takes less time than it takes to dial a, a number. Uh, uh, yeah, Delta, I recommend you listen to him. I can tell you what he just said, what he just had to say. You know, uh, it sounds like he's got a lot of experience in managing properties because I, I don't disagree with anything that, that Ken just said. So, uh, uh, but uh, anyways, well, I appreciate you guys hanging out. And, uh, you know, uh, if you get a chance to watch the video that happened earlier, I thought that was kind of interesting. And anyways, uh, so look, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel and uh, uh, like the videos. And if you get a chance, go to the under the videos and comment where you can. It, it helps. The algorithm helps me get more hits. And uh, anyways, anybody got anything, just let me know.